This presentation is a little bit of a departure from the other topic of the week, which focused on specific analytics practices, the use of Tableau, visualization techniques, and the data cycle itself. But it's an important conversation to have early on in the course because it's something that influences a lot of what happens with analytics within a school system or a university or a department. And that's the system level dimension of how analytics are deployed and some of the factors that influence their adoption. So if you look at any classroom or any university, you'll find that there are a range of individuals, individual faculty members on the right hand side of the diagram that are busy doing some level of analysis. They might just be using the basic data they get a hold of from an LMS or learning management system. They might be doing some uh, analysis work with social media interactions for participants, but by and large there's some analytics activity going on. And this is bottom-up activity and typically the data sets are small and generally they're not integrated, meaning that you don't have a variety of different types of data sources that you're using in the analytics process that gives you a broader or a deeper understanding of the overall situation. When you have the benefit of a top-down initiative where senior leadership in a school or university or college decides to make analytics a priority or the use of data to improve the performance or the, of teaching and learning in the system, decides to make that a priority, then you have an opportunity to do a range of more complex and more integrated analytics activities. For example, an intervention an automated intervention system that allows for the identification of students who are at risk and then allows the school or the university to automatically target support resources to those individuals. That's something that a faculty member on their own working with a small amount of data isn't going to be able to do. So you really need the integrated institutional level support in order to start to create more structured interventions and also support services for organizational capacity building with analytics. Now quite often the analytics approach in school starts or university starts really at the bottom in this aware category where you're dealing with basic reports and maybe working with some log data. Over time though you want to progressively move up the pipeline to get more involved with different opportunities for faculty and students to learn from data. You might be starting to use dashboards or students might have opportunities to see how they're doing in the course overall compared to students that traditionally that it might have taken that course. Ultimately though you want to move to something where it has broader institutional impact, meaning that the university starts to function differently because it's making effective use of data in order to make a positive impact on the performance of students. Theoretically, if you carry that through to the peak aspect where there's actually a systemic transform uh, or sector-wide transformation where you could have university systems for example that are better able to compete internationally because they make effective use of data and that influences how decisions are made and how assessments are essentially produced for the sector as a whole in comparison to their peers. So what does this look like? Well, from an institutional perspective, a range of issues need to be addressed, from strategy to resource allocation, defining tools, building capacity, and then ultimately the systemic change. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on each of these, but I'll just introduce broadly what the ideas are. So from a strategy end, from institutional analytics, there needs to be a sense of what kind of data are we collecting and what role does that data play. There are also questions around what kind of problems do we want to solve with this analytics project or initiative and who are the people that are funding it or supporting it or directing it. There's also a range of questions that need to be addressed particularly around privacy and ethics and also who gets to see the data that's being generated and are students aware of what's being collected. So if organizations are starting to use different analytic models to understand learning performance and activity then it's reasonable expectations for students at minimum to be aware of what's happening and perhaps more appropriately to actually have access to similar data that the, that the university has access to. But that's the strategy development stage. That's a lot of uh, policy or related work in making sure that institutionally guidelines are set and are being followed. From there, it's about starting to look at what's required to be an analytics-centric university. Uh, what kinds of talent or skills need to be hired or developed? What are the particular data sources you're going to use and the budgets that are allocated and how are the 
projects going to be deployed in a way that uh, meets the needs and interests of the broader community and also allows an opportunity for the broader community to provide input into the analytics processes that are being developed by the system. From there, it's about starting to identify what the particular tools are that will be used, whether they're enterprise level tools and the dashboards and related activities that will be used in order to help communicate insight that's generated from the analytics uh, processes. There's a range of concerns though around capacity development. While quite often an analytics team or a data science team if you will can function uh, fairly well in terms of solving complex problems, but even the data or the insight that's generated needs to be read or understood or made sense of by someone in an organization. And so it's important that there's institutional capacity development around thinking with data or being able to track and follow the logic of data. And there's value, again, to student understanding as well, letting students know the value of using certain types of analytic outputs to use as part of their self-regulation of their learning practices. And then finally, there are the systemic change dimensions, which relates to how do we change as an institution? How do we teach differently? How do we start to think of a university or a school as an analytics-based system rather than one that ignores the large swath of data that generates on a regular basis?